Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Jam, back into plane reviews. Today we're taking a look at some from a guy named Landfish2, who does a bunch of replicas, which are pretty cool. Oh, and the clippiness. Oh, oh it burns, it burns. The Z fighting, the Z fighting everywhere. Oh, 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 but this is a Desalt, Desalt Raphael. So uh, let's take a look at the little indicator thingies. Interesting. All right, let's give it a fly. Also, I'm still sick, so excuse me while I try to open cough syrup while doing the, it's uh, fuck it okay time to, to play the thing okay it's slightly crooked on the runway did it start that way oh no oh no he didn't he didn't <gasps> he didn't um put struts between the rear part so the rear is really wibbly oh no that is not good my friend that is not good that is not good at all also i'm oh nope nope i thought i was gonna crash it just then but oh shit i am no i'm not no i'm not See, I pulled out of it. <laughs> this thing, uh, this thing doesn't turn very fast. Unfortunately, those uh, giant aerodynamic surfaces, while being giant and cool, are not the most uh, effective. It seems interesting. Let's see. I'm I'm curious now. Like, okay, the velocity vector relative to our position vector, it's a little below. As it's weird the way the body is two pieces that are angled in a weird way and stuff. It's it's very weird. It looks cool, though, and it is like a Desalt Raphael, which is what it's supposed to be like. So, yes, there we go. The only problem is he needs to strut these because, as you saw, that almost had us blown up on takeoff. Uh, that could have gone horribly wrong if I didn't get into the air when I did. Hmm. Yes. Let's move on to the next one. Still trying to open the cough syrup. This is a Eurofighter, so it is a very, very similar design. In fact, I'm pretty sure he probably just, uh... Like, he did one of these first and then based the other one off of it. It probably flies very simple. Excuse me. Probably flies very similar as well. In fact, the only real difference between the two is these uh, leading edge root extensions. Ha! I know what they're called. That's what they're actually called, by the way. When, when you have a bit that sticks out more in the front on the uh, root of the wing. Because this is the root. This is the edge, I think they call it. No, no, they don't call it the edge. Tip. Excuse me, yeah, tip. Edge is either the front or rear, the leading edge, the trailing edge, well, it'd be back here on the control surface. Then you have the tip and you have the root. And when you have this right here on the front, that's a leading edge root extension because you're extending the root out. Yes, I'm not going to bother to fly this one because it, it's going to fly pretty much the same as the other one. It's, oh, the landing gear placement is slightly different in a way that's kind of ugly. Next we have an F-18 with the camera stuck underneath it. Whoa, whoa, whoops, I didn't do that. I totally didn't do that. Wow, that looks cool. Oh wow, I like the way that looks. Ooh, I like the way that looks. Like, I'm massively ignoring the Z fighting because it's killing my brain, but, and, and the fact that these are clipped in here so massively, but otherwise, wow, I really like the look of this. This episode shall henceforth be known as the episode where I tried to open cough syrup for the entire episode and, and failed. Failed like a miserable, come on, open, stupid thing. Yes, got it open. Okay, I accidentally threw away the cup. Oh well, we're taking off now. Alright, so this is supposed to be an F-18. Let's go ahead and sing it to full throttle. Sing it, swing it, whatever. I like, see, it's unfortunate that there's the Z fighting, because else these cockpits look really cool like this, but the Z fighting makes me hate it, even though it looks really cool. Okay, so these are, oh, these are active for roll. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're slightly clippy. Oh, look at that. It's, oh, it's clippy. I don't like that. Oh, I hate that so much. But he did actually bother to make certain things only active for certain things, which is cool. I kind of wish he'd just made these completely inactive, and then we'd have the outside B-roll, and, uh, excuse me, and then pitch on the back, of course, and then these are yaw. Of course, they're being used for pitch and yaw. Okay, that's interesting. Ah, oh, yes, this thing does, this thing does a nice turn. Very good. Losing a lot of airspeed doing these tight turns. And, um, of course, I have to do it, because he's used solar panels to make these, I have to just, come on, extend, and there we go. Bye bye. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah, it just leaves that bit when it breaks off. Yeah, that's a cool use for the solar panels actually for as design choice really, but unfortunately it's like I don't like I don't like using them for design choice in a place where it wouldn't make sense for them to be there, you know? Although now the plane doesn't look as good. Still looks really good, but not quite as good. Alright, let's do a high speed pass over the ding. 
Hi phone, you're supposed to be off. No, don't ding again. All right, let's do a high speed pass over the KSC and then I will go to the next plane and fix my phone and take my cough syrups. Come on, there we go, and, and, that was pretty close. Oh yeah. And this is an F-15, which, oh my god, what? Oh my god, he's using the ore tanks as a freaking, oh, as like a style, oh, that's cool. Oh my god, I like that. See, the reason I like that, but I don't so much like using the uh, solar panels as a style thing, is see, the solar panels actually, like, would extend, and then once you extended them, they look horrible. I mean, I guess I could apply the same argument to using these as style choices, because you can retract them, and then they don't look as good, but I I don't know. I'm weird like that. I'm inconsistent and weird in certain ways, but it, it, that is cool, other than the, the bit of... Well, actually, that still looks all right. I mean, it's a little ugly right there with the clipping, but otherwise, it's pretty much all right. I can ignore the little problems here and there. I can totally... Yeah, this F-15 looks cool. Oh, wow, that's interesting, the way he's done the uh, control surfaces. Yes, okay, let's take a look at these things. <laughs> the center of lift indicator got a little confused. You know the little cup thing cough syrup comes with? I'm actually still- there we go. I was actually still struggling to get that open, because it wouldn't- it wouldn't open! It would, I don't understand. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? This is the episode where I struggle with <laughs> cough syrup. I already said that joke, didn't I? Okay, we're in the air. This thing does not turn all that fast. Hmm. Yeah, it's still fairly quickly. Whoosh. Oh, I love doing low flybys of things like that. Oops, no, 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 don't pull into the ground. Pull away from the ground. Yeah, unfortunately this thing isn't that... Eh, eh, eh. Yeah, it's not that maneuverable, but it's alright. And it definitely gets up to some serious speed. So you can fly by the VAB super close. Whoa, that's a bit too close. Well, never mind. I got it. Oh, shit, that's upside down. This thing has that same problem that I've been... That I had with the uh, Stubbs fighter. Uh, where it rolls really easily. So like this thing, I believe all these control surfaces are roll. Oh, they're all just on for everything. Well, they shouldn't be, but um, really it just should be these like outer surfaces because this thing rolls way too easily, way too fast. You see what I mean? It just starts spinning. Otherwise, I'm really liking it. Could use a bit more maneuverability, but that's not its fault. Well, actually, no, no, it's, it's good. It's good. Because the way you'd have to do things to increase maneuverability on this would be to go cheaty with it or break away from uh, it being an F-15. And uh, I don't want you to do that because it's a good replica. And uh, the, I got pretty close to the ground there, but I didn't die. So that's good. Ah, yes. Very nice. All right, next one. All right, so this is supposed to be an improved version of that F-15. I don't immediately notice the differences, other than the fact that it lacks the uh, style barrel thing. Maybe I got these in the wrong order, and the other one's the improved version, but I'm 99% sure that this is supposed to be the improved version. But, uh, I don't know, maybe, I should say 90% sure, because I'm like not super, super positively sure, just sort of mostly positively sure. Oh, God! Cherry flavored cough syrup! Oh, oh, oh. So disgusting. Why am I doing this while recording? <laughs> so, this version... This version seems to be more maneuverable. Yes, I would definitely say this is the improved version, at least for maneuverability. Also, yes, it does look a bit more like an F-15, because I believe the other one didn't have the uh, rear control surfaces extended out as far like that, like the F-15 actually does, like this does. Oh, yes, I love that low flyby, yes do a slight bit of a barrel roll, although it wasn't quite a proper full barrel roll, but if I tried to do a quite proper full barrel roll right there, I would have crashed into the ground, possibly, probably, maybe. Alright, yes. Very nice. Loving the way this is performing. Alright, I'll move on to the next one now, which is actually a new plane, not the F-15 again. Next up we have the F-16. Interesting. I'm liking it. Yes. Very nice. Did I try to make an F-16? No, I did not. Oh my god! The way you've done the I-beams to make that re Oh, that's cool! Just two I-beams like that? That is a cool way to do that. Oh my gosh. That- that is such a cool way to do that. Like, I would have never thought to do that, because I would have just done one I-beam and then just dealt with the fact that it was slightly off-looking, whereas he's like, let me just put an I-beam in an I-beam so that it looks like a box instead of an I-beam. That is great. <coughs> I'm also dying slightly. 
All right, here we go. Oh, this one is not um, strutted together either, so it is slightly wibbly wobbly. Oh my god, that's cool. He's using an uh, inactive Elevon as a whoa, 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 as a structural piece, which is pretty cool. And also, like I said, you really need to strut your stuff together at the back because else you get that wibbliness. Well, first of all, you get that wibbliness on the runway, which screws you up, and then also you get this and fly it. Look at this. That is not how real plane do. That is just... Ugh, I don't want to fly this anymore because it's just so... Ugh, that's not how it works. No, stop doing that. Ah, oh, it looks so pretty until you start flying it, and then you're like, why? Why, world? Why would you do this to me? Unfortunately, we don't have another F-16 that is improved, but we do have an F-18. Huh. Yeah, I can see how this is supposed to be an F-18, but it is, it just, it's slightly off. It feels slightly off, and it's probably because KSP parts do limit you somewhat in how much things you can shove together in certain ways to make cool things. Yeah, it feels ever so slightly off, but I think we shall give it a proper try. Wait, wait, center mass, center of lift. <laughs> KSP, you don't know what you're doing. All right, here we are on the runway and engaging at maximum warp. I mean, you know, throttle. Oh no, clippiness, clippiness, why? On the yaw, clip, clip, kippiness, clippiness, kippiness. Oh no, this one isn't shredded together either, so it's doing ridiculous things. Let's pay very close attention to not paying close attention to the back so that it doesn't bug me and I can fly it without being annoyed by the silliness that is clippiness. Well, I've determined that that thing can, can, can pull out really... Do I not have a pilot? I don't have a pilot. Oh, here's the pilot. Get out! Get out! Survive! Yes. Okay, land on your head. I don't know how to make you land on your head, but no, wait. Second fall, you don't land on your head. Only the first fall do you land on your head. I don't know how to make him flip upside down. I don't know how to make him flip upside down. I don't know how to make him... And he survived. Now we get to watch that piece crash, or just disappear. Nope, it's still flying. See? Oh, now it's on fire. Oh, look, there's pieces still flying up there. Look, it's our engines. They believe they can fly without the rest of the plane. They're eventually gonna crash, but in the meantime, do loop-de-loop-de-loops -loop everywhere. Okay, that's enough of that. Alright, and after that beautiful demonstration of the fact that this thing can pull up so quickly that it tears itself into pieces, let's put it down to uh, one-third throttle and pull up really hard and do it again. That wasn't what I was intending to d do, but it was. Actually, oh, this is not a controllable part. Hold then, I guess we get to watch it explode. Oh, of course that piece survives. It also doesn't have a kerbal in it. What? Alright, time to try again. This time I took off much further down the runway, and we're gonna pull up. Yes, there we go. See, what I was about to say originally was that this thing was extremely maneuverable, but right at that point I maneuvered so hard that it broke itself into pieces, so I really was just like, oh, okay. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the throttle while holding down up. Basically I'm gonna keep maneuvering, and actually let's just go ahead and full throttle it and see if this thing can handle maneuvering like this while at full throttle once I've already been, you know, holding down the button. Because obviously, changing to trying to do these extreme maneuvers while at full throttle, that did not go very well. Oh shit, oh wow. This thing, yes, this thing maneuvers very, very quickly. It's, wow. This thing's like super maneuverable. You know what it is? Actually, I remember now, the center of lift is ever so slightly in front of the center of mass, so that explains the uh, super maneuverability of this particular plane, which is pretty cool! I didn't hit the edge of that. <coughs> I didn't hit the edge of that. Holy shit, that was close though. Alright, there you go. Now that we've actually gotten it flying without breaking into a million pieces, let's check out the next thing. Alright, so next up we have an F-22, which looks too long to me, but it's... Uh, maybe I'd have to look at an F-22 again and see that I'm wrong or something, but I swear this is too long. Like, an F-22 should be shorter than this, a little bit more stout. Not that much shorter, but like, this little gap here should be about a third of... Uh, uh, two-thirds of its size or half of its size, and same thing with like, this area here, like, this should be less. 
I don't know, I could be wrong, but I just think that's what it is. Also, you have a bit of a thing sticking out of there. It's ugly. It's it's so ugly. Yeah, it looks a bit strange with the wing bits down there. That's that's weird. What are those for? Are those to make it fly properly? Because they're they're very weirdly placed. All right, here we go. Testing the control surfaces on the runway. Regretting testing the control surfaces on the runway ever so slightly. Watching the tail fold down as I put extreme forces on it, because that's fun. All right, and let's pull up as hard as we can and watch this thing not turn all that fast. Oh, it's less maneuverable than the F-15. It should be more maneuverable. Have you ever seen an F-22 flying in real life? It's pretty freaking cool. Well, I've only seen a video of it, so it wasn't real life, but it was... It was still pretty cool because it was a real F F-22 actually flying and stuff, and that was pretty cool. This thing's going really fast. Oh, shit! That is how, um, possibly to land. Oh, shit, I didn't mean to EVA right then. Oh, no! Wait, what? What? Am I gonna... St yeah, I meant to EVA right then. That was completely planned. And that's how you survive a uh, high-impact uh, crash while maneuvering an F-22. Yeah. All right, and here's the new and improved F-22-2. Uh, two, because it's the, the second second one. Yeah. There's two downloads, by the way, if, if you've gotten this far in the video, and I know I haven't mentioned that yet, but there's... Uh, excuse me. There's two downloads. There's there's one that's uh, that's most of these, and there's one that's a couple of them that were done better and redone. So yeah, this is the one from the ones that were done, redone, better, done, yes, done. Let's go. Done. I was always an automatic. Sorry for my horrible singing, but there's this song called uh, Automatic by Yuck. And uh, there's a remix or fix up. It's called Loon, Loon Sparks, Lone Sparks, Fix Up or whatever. I'll, I'm going to link to a video of it in the description. And you should go check it out because it is an awesome song. And this thing also isn't strutted, so it's like moving slightly. But I'm going to try to ignore that to enjoy the fact that this thing can pull up really hard. Yes way better than the other F-22. Yes, this is nice. Oh yeah, look at that. Bell roll, except I did that too low! Oh, never mind, it was okay. <laughs> I thought I was doomed for sure. But yes, this one's definitely way more maneuverable. Yes, there we go. Alright, yeah. Yeah, slight lag spike there for a moment. Don't know why. Sorry about that. Okay, let's pull up. Yep, let's go... Oh shit! Why did I try to do a barrel roll at that low of an altitude, knowing that this thing couldn't do it? I, like I knew better than to do that, but I did it anyhow. All right, there's still some more planes to go through in this save, but I'm actually going to cut it off there, at least for now, and make a part one and a part two to this, or maybe I'll glue them back together later, in which case I'll edit out what I'm saying right now. Thanks for watching. As always, see you in space.